Hey fam, this video is for Shayna. She requested something on pharmacology. Now, I still don't think that I'm the best person for this video because the curriculum has changed. Um, my cohort, and I believe all the cohorts before me, we did pharmacology in two semesters. In the first semester, it was mostly math, but we also learned a little bit about insulin and a little bit about heparin. And then, the second semester, which I'm in right now, is when we're learning all of the drugs. Um, I believe, and I'm, I'm pretty certain, that the people who came into spring semester 2022, they're taking pharmacology, the whole thing in one semester. So like your first couple of weeks is math, and then the last couple of weeks, or last several weeks, is the drugs. So, um, I'm probably not the best because I'm actually in the process of taking the class. All I can tell you is that it's hard. It's by far the hard, like we had five classes last semester and five classes this semester. Of these 10 classes, this one is the hardest. And it's not because there's so much information to pour through. It's that all the drugs have all the same adverse reactions. They have all of the same indications. They have like they're just, everything is so similar, but there's 10 million different names. And they're all, it's like, they all have the same adverse reactions, indications, signs and symptoms, except for like one thing. So it's like, oh God. But um, I still was able to come up with three things that might help you. Um, I am passing the class, so. <laughs> Um, the first is if you watch TV, which, child, I know most nursing students don't have time for TV, but I do. Like, I don't spend every hour on the hour studying. I have plenty of downtime to relax, and I usually watch Netflix. So if you watch TV, make sure it's a medical show. Um, on Netflix right now, they have Grey's Anatomy, they have Chicago Med, and they have Night Shift. And all of these shows are typically centered around the emergency room, so you see like a lot of emergency type drugs. But, um, and I know that they're not the most accurate, but they do use a lot of terminology that once you get to med surge, you will definitely recognize. And even some things from pharmacology, I mean, not pharmacology, from fundamentals, you will recognize these terminologies and keywords. For instance, in Grey's Anatomy, uh, you know, a big thing is like the neurosurgeons, Derek Shepard and his sister Amelia, and they're always saying, push so, so much of mannitol. <laughs> and now being in um, med surge and in pharmacology, I realized it's to decrease the ICP, the intracranial pressure. Um, but I recognize that now because I've gone through it in class. And then when I rewatch the show, I'm like, oh, I know what that's for. No wonder they want to push me at all. And then the Chicago Med is funny because every single person that comes in, they want a CBC, a CMP, and ABGs. So the ABG I knew because of fundamentals. Um, but I actually, while I was watching the show, Googled CBC and CMP. And I'm like, oh, is that what that is? And that was before I started nursing school. And then when I was in nursing school and rewatching it, I was like, boop, I know what that is. <laughs> so I knew what it was when it came up in, um, in Fundamentals. Okay, and then Night Shift. Night Shift is pretty cool. It seems pretty accurate. Um, as far as how they explain certain things. Like the other the other day I was watching it and the doctor was talking um, about, um, he was worried that based on the signs and symptoms that the guy might have intracranial pressure. And I was like, ooh, I just learned about ICP. That sounds right. Y'all better get him um, stabilized and keep his heart from pumping too much. You know, you don't want him to have increased oxygen demand. <laughs> Okay, the second thing is on ATI doing active learning templates. So I'm not the biggest fan of ATI, but when my clinical professor introduced me to active learning templates, it changed the game for me. Um, I hate busy work. I hate all forms of busy work, but um, the easiest way to really become familiar with drugs is to see them over and over and over again. 
So um, reading it in your textbook and then doing an active learning template, a medication sheet and um, filling it out, that's seeing it for the second time. And then maybe you see it on a medical show, that's the third time. Maybe you go to YouTube and you see it a fourth time. And then you go back to the book and read again, you've seen it a fifth time. By the time you get back to the fourth, third, fourth, fifth time, you should know the drug. Or if it's, um, like let's say you're in med surge, you should know the disease process. <laughs> um, and then the last thing, and I preach this in every video, is practice questions. The thing I would say is that I, I have failed to mention in past videos is reading the rationales once you're finished with the practice question. It's the practice questions, just doing them, they help you with your thought process. Um, a lot of times we approach a question with the wrong thought process. So by doing tons and tons of questions, it helps to uh, tweak your thought process, fine tune it, so that when you approach a question, you already know what it's asking you. Is it asking me priority? Is it asking me delegation? Is it asking me about disease process? Like you have to know how to approach questions. And then rationales, they fine tune your, your knowledge. It makes you uh, understand whether or not your reasonings for choosing answers is correct. And then when you read the rationale, it corrects your reasonings if they're wrong or reinforces your reasoning. So you have to you have to spend time doing practice questions. Like I typically only do 10 to 25 in one sitting. So when I'm doing, when I'm far out from a test, I'm doing 10 questions at a time. And then when it's like, like right now, when the test is, the, today is Sunday morning and my, my exam is Monday morning, uh, every time I go to do practice questions is 25 at a time. Um, and then the reason to do practice questions while you're studying is sometimes the question may be on something you haven't even read yet and it teaches you. And so when you go into the book and read it, it's like, I remember this and your, your knowledge is just enhanced that way. So I hope these help. Um, I just took practice A for pharmacology and I got a 61.7%. It's a level one, very frustrating, but at the same time, we've only gone over endocrine. <laughs> endocrine, um, neuro, respiratory, cardio. I think that's it. Um, and there is so much more to go. So the fact that we've only, I think there is one or two more weird. So the fact that we've only gone, gone over like four to six chapters and I was able to at least score, make it onto the scoreboard, you know? I think that I'm actually, and the crazy part is, is most of the questions I got were not on the things we went over. So when it comes to ATI, you need to learn to be a good guesser. So, a small portion of the test um, has nothing to do with the drugs, pharmacology. It has everything to do with um, nursing math, which of course you gotta get that 100%, duh. Um, and then about uh, health management, it's about the psychosocial side of it, and um, there was one other, but they're like basics that have nothing to do with pharmacology, just everything to do with nursing process. I got 100% of all on those because, you know, you just have to. Like once you pass fundamentals, you need to be getting 100% on those. Um, but you need to go to my study tips video. I have two of them and um, I have one for test taking tips and then one for study. You need to look at them because I tell you how to guess. Um, it's a simple process, but once you have a certain amount of knowledge, guessing becomes easier. Um, a lot of times nursing exams, even ATI, you don't have the necessary knowledge to answer the question, but you have enough knowledge to weed out obviously wrong answers and maybe wrong answers. So you have to become good at guessing. And when you do, you'll, 
if you if you rely on your guessing, you're not going to pass. But if you have enough knowledge to be able to pass an exam, then being a good guesser is what elevates you from a B to a C. I mean, from a C to a B and a B to an A. So, um, I'm going to do the remediation. And um, I also, uh, I took notes while I was taking the practice exam. I took note of the drugs they were asking me about. And I'm going to study those drugs. Um, so that I can, I don't know, I just, I want to do well um, on practice test B so that when it comes time, so when I do, and you're not required to do remediation after practice test B, but I always do the remediation because I'm just hoping, for me, I just, I want a level two so bad. I don't know if I can improve enough to get to a level three, but I don't want to be stuck at a level one. Ugh. All right, guys, I rambled enough. I appreciate you guys. I love you guys. I got to get on to this care plan and my med sheets. <laughs> and I got to study.